1939. Frank was extinguished the flame of democracy in Spain after a grueling, the regular long civil war with the Second Spanish Republic. The Second Spanish Republic, or how I like to call it, Republican Spain, has been destroyed by Frank of Spain. Today's video discuss the birth, life, and death of Republican Spain. But first, a little background. Let's go all the way back to 1874. This year marked the end of the First Spanish Republic and the beginning of the Bourbon Restoration. The Bourbon Restoration essentially restored the monarchy under Alfonso XII. The new government would be plagued with corruption and economic problems. After decades of these problems and due to growing the mass of the Republic, Admiral Juan Bautista Snar, the Prime Minister at the time, called for local elections on the 12th of April of 1931. The Republic was declared on the 14th of April of 1931. The politically divided government was briefly led by Niceto Calasamora and faced turbulent infighting from socialists and traditionalists. In June of 1931, a Republican Socialist Coalition beat the Conservative, Conservative Party in the elections of the parliamentary courts. The new constitution passed in December of 1931 reflected the ideas many parliamentary members held. The constitution of 1931 established several progressive reforms, one of which was popular sovereignty. It declared a new state as the democratic republic of workers of all classes. It also established a secular state, also known as separation of church and state. This move deeply angered the Catholic Church. There was an extensive declaration of rights and liberties, including freedom of speech, rights to education, and civil, li civil liberties like divorce. Perhaps the most progressive reform was universal suffrage, which granted women the right to vote. The new Republican Socialist government, led by Manuel San, passed several reforms that sought to, so sought to solve the problems that were harming the working class. The central government even granted certain powers to the Catalan region by passing a home rule law. These reforms outraged the conservative crowd. It outre outraged them so much that there was an attempted coup by General Sanjurjo in 1932. Despite his actions, Sanjurjo asserted that the rebellion was only against the current ministry and not against the republic. A poor excuse in my opinion, but it worked. He would meet his demise not by a firing squad, but by a plane crash in 1936, where he, where he insisted on bringing heavy luggage. His story is quite interesting. There's a link in the description if you'd like to read more about his story. The Depression of the 1930s had a great impact on the political landscape of Spain. In response to the growing economic crisis, conservative forces such as the Rose Radical Party and Joe Robes, Spanish Confederation of the Autonomous Right, or CEDA for short, came out on top. After the elections, Alejandro Luro, from the government, that needed the parliamentary support of the CEDA. The main objective of this coalition was to reverse reforms to the previous administration. The new government halted military reforms that promoted anti-Republican figures such as Franco, Goaded and Mola. It also confronted Catalan and Basque nationalism. It rejected a project of Basque country home rule in 1934 and clashed with the Catalonian Generalitat, which was the Catal Catalan regional government. The entrance of some CEDA ministers into the government in 1934 brought the left to the point of rebellion. The left viewed the entrance of the CEDA ministers into the government as a precedent for a fascist takeover. The radical left, including groups such as the PSOE, Spanish Socialist Workers Party, UGT, or General Union, uh, General Union of Workers, and the CNT, National Confederation of Labor, called a strike against the government. The movement was a failure in most parts of the country. However, however in Asturias, the general strike succeeded and resulted in a real revolution organized by the C, by UGT, and the CNT. The uprising's persistence led to the government calling on Franco to lead the Legion to put an end to revolt. Shortly afterward, various 
various corruption scandals in 1935 led Rose Garment to call for an early election in February of 1936. The Popular Front, a coalition that brought together the forces of the left, won the elections of February of 1936. Although the government was still made up of primarily leftist Republicans, socialists and communists still remained excluded from the government. The new government brought back the agrarian reforms, re-established the Catalonian Home Rule, and they began the debate of the, over new autonomy statutes of Galicia and the Basque Country. The social environment in Spain was becoming tenser by the day. Both the left and the right were eager to take control of the divided nation. The workers on the left had taken on a more revolutionary slant. The right was seeking a way to carry out a military coup that would put an end to the democratic system. The moderates and democrats were helpless to maintain the status quo. The death of democracy was marked by a military coup led by Franco throughout the 17th and 19th of July. Franco was successful in taking control of some areas in the country, but key areas like Madrid, Catalonia, and the Basque Country remained in the hands of the Republic. The country was divided into two zones, the, Rep the Republican zone and the Nationalist zone, but the military established a dictatorship under Franco. Although the Civil War was a small conflict in the Iberian Peninsula, the Spanish Civil War represented an, an, an opportunity for the major powers of the time to show that their ideology was right. National Spain received substantial support from Germany, Italy, and to some extent, Portugal. With their help, Franco's troops were able to be transported back to the peninsula, but that, was, that wasn't all the aid they received. Mussolini, the leader of Italy, sent 70,000 Italian troops, ammunition, and implements of war, while Hitler, no one necessary, ordered the Condor Legion to significantly increase Franco's air superiority. The Condor Legion's most infamous act was the bombing in Guernica. Guernica was a town used for communications behind the front lines and was what stood between the Nationalist and the capture of Northern Spain. The bombing was met with controversy around the world as military aircraft was used against, used against civilians. This attack would foreshadow the bombing raids that occurred during the Second World War. The bombing of Guernica inspired the infamous painter Pablo, Pablo Picasso to create a large oil painting by the same name. The only reasonable aid that, that was sent to the Republican Spain was from the USSR, as he tried to receive, um, as he tried to prevent another fascist government taking over in Western Europe. He sent advisors, supplies. But the support paled in comparison to the aid nationalists received. But what about the democracies? What about the UK and France? Despite being two of the largest empires in the world, both the UK and France remain neutral. Their neutrality can be explained through the lens of not wanting to aid a fascist government or a republic that was sympathetic to communism. Now, back to the war. The war went through three major phases. The first phase of the war spanned from July of 1936 to March 1937. With Hitler and Mussolini's help, Franco's troops managed to bring the army units located in Morocco to the Spanish Peninsula. Important sections of, the, of central and western Spain were caught by the rebels. However, Franco's army failed in its attempt to take Madrid. The second, the second phase of the war spanned from April of 1937 to November of 1937. In this phase, Franco's troops conquered the northern strip that was still held by the Republicans and launched a major, a major offensive towards the Mediterranean Sea to break the Republican zone into two isolated sections. The third and final wave of the phase of the war spanned from December of 1937 to February of 1939. In this phase of the war, nationalist troops arrived at the Mediterranean Sea in Castellón. The last Republican offensive and the toughest battle of the war was the Battle of Ebro in July and November of 1938. The Republican loss at the Battle of Ebro eliminated, eliminated their hopes of winning the war, which ended the capture of Catalonia and Madrid. The Second Spanish Republic met its end on April 1st, 1939. 
Is it a coincidence that Republican Spain fall in April Fools? I think not. If you'd like to know anything more about Republican, Republican Spain, or join my Discord, there are links in the description. And if you'd like to know anything more about history, perhaps the proposed invasion of Japan in 1945, there's a link in the description for that too. Please watch it, hey views. If you enjoyed this video, found it educational or entertaining, please like, share, and subscribe. This has been I Don't Know History.